welcome to Medical Dialogues Journal Club. I am Dr. Nandita Mohan. Here is what I have for you all today. We all know that tuberculosis is a potentially serious infectious disease that mainly affects the lungs. Now, a total of close to 1.6 million people died from TB in the year 2021. Worldwide, tuberculosis is the 13th leading cause of death and the second leading infectious killer after COVID-19 and still continues to complicate health in several ways. Isolated duodenal tuberculosis, however, is a rare entity. It is generally seen in cases with massive involvement of the rest of the intestinal tract. The present study published in this journal reports a case study of a young man with duodenal tuberculosis. It talks about a 32-year-old male who presented himself with recurrent vomiting for six months period. Vomiting mostly happened after eating meals and the vomitus was non-bilious and contained ingested food residue mostly. There was also a history of weight loss. However, there was no history of anorexia, fever, abdominal pain, jaundice, gastrointestinal bleeding, cough or even hemoptysis for that matter. And also there was no history of tuberculosis. Contrast, enhanced commuted tomography of the abdomen was advised that actually showed the thickened duodenum at D1 and D2 segments junction. The upper gastrointestinal endoscopy was performed which showed edematous infiltrated mucosa in the duodenum at the junction of D1 and D2 segments. Eight biopsies were taken from the area and the histopath examination of this duodenal biopsy is revealed chronic inflammatory infiltrate only. The repeat endoscopy was then conducted to obtain a specimen for biopsy, keeping in view findings of the gastric outlet obstruction. Again, in this region, eight biopsies were taken. The histopath study now revealed features of chronic inflammation, necrosis, giant cells and even granulomas. On Zeal Nielsen's stain, the tissue specimen was positive for acid fast bacillus. The patient was initiated on an anti tubercular therapy, that is, the intensive phase, including rifampicin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol, was given for a period of two months, followed by a continuation phase that included rifampicin and isoniazid for eight months. The symptoms of the patient did improve. So, at the end of the treatment, there was no features of gastric outlet obstruction and he also had gained weight. The follow-up endoscopy at the end of the treatment was grossly normal and it revealed a mild deformity at the junction of D1 and D2 without any obstruction. So on the follow-up histopath, no giant cell granuloma was observed and was negative for acid fast bacillus. Though gastric outlet obstruction is commonly associated with malignancies as well as peptic ulcer disease, the first diagnosis is always other than duodenal tuberculosis in most of the cases. Since the features of duodenal tuberculosis can be non-specific, a higher index of suspicion is necessary for the diagnosis based on clinical, radiological and endoscopic features, especially in tuberculosis endemic countries of Southeast Asia. That's all for today. Stay tuned to Medical Dialogues for latest updates. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe and press the bell icon.